We haven't met yet. I'm Clint. I don't care. This is Clint Barton. He's a world-class marksman, super spy, and a member of the Avengers. However, nobody seems to care about him. In the comics, Hawkeye has a near 60-year history, a dedicated fan base, and a code name. In the movies, he's just Clint Barton, and he's definitely not anyone's favorite Avenger. Why is that? Okay, look, the city's flying. We're fighting an army of robots, and I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. Before we get too far into today's episode, be sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgic to stay up to date with everything we've got going on. First appearing in Marvel's Thor and sporadically appearing in the MCU ever since, you'd think that Clint Barton would be a fan favorite. He's the everyman, the mortal with feet of clay, surrounded by superhuman beings and literal gods. And yet, it doesn't quite feel like there's a stalwart fan base who are clamoring for more of Jeremy Renner's Mauve Archer. Yes, he had his own Disney Plus show and has appeared in six feature film outings. However, he never seems to have much to do or get much development. So much so, in fact, that Jeremy Renner was driven to publicly express his misgivings that his character was under mind control throughout most of his debut. He went so far as to ruin multiple takes by clasping his heart and falling to the ground. When asked what he was doing, he said he was acting like he was having a heart attack so he could be killed off at any point in the movie. I've done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. In Age of Ultron, the Marvel Creative Committee tried to fix this rocky start. Clint was given a backstory of being a family man and wanting to leave the S.H.I.E.L.D. life. However, at the end of the day, the character still just ended up being the badass with a heart of gold cliché. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, buddy. These are Look at your face. smaller agents. In his most meaningful appearance in the MCU, his family is killed, he reinvents himself as a vengeful ninja, and is eventually pulled back into the fold by Natasha. This is the most development the character has received over his cinematic existence and is based exclusively on the least interesting time of his comic book adventures. <laughs> In the comics, Clint Barton first appears in Tales of Suspense, number 57, from September of 1964. The character was originally a villain, harshly deaf, and a circus performer. The archer by trade ultimately took to a life of crime to make ends meet. He also looks much different than the black leather ensemble that Barton usually sports. The character that the MCU has attempted to develop is more closely related to the Ultimates version of Hawkeye than the traditional 616 version. He's a spy, he's got a family, and he's a badass. Even going so far as to kill multiple adversaries with his fingernails. I'm starting to root for this guy. By comparison, the MCU Barton is bland, very bland, and there's a few reasons for this. Hawkeye never got the shine that Cap or Tony or Thor got. Thus, he was relegated to supporting character in the continuing Avengers films. They just don't have enough time or space to fully flesh him out in those large ensemble action films. You know what would be interesting for Clint to do? Wear his traditional purple costume, use trick arrows like a boxing glove and a boomerang, and have a relationship with Bobby Morse. But we'll get to that in a second. That seems like how you would want to set up the character, but Whedon and co just couldn't be bothered. So, Renner's Barton is closer to unnamed G.I. Joe background character than to his four-colored counterpart. The MCU is fine with literal dragons and aliens, but a purple mask and a boxing glove arrow? <laughs> That's too far. Yeah, I didn't write it. <laughs> you blame Joss. That's right. <laughs> However, there was a silver lining to all of this. Matt Fraction and David Aha's Hawkeye. This is the book that everyone was clamoring for an adaptation of. Running for 22 issues, this series positioned Clint Barton as a broken man. We follow him on his days off while he emotionally attempts to recover from the high toll being a superhero takes on you. The book is equal parts Rockford Files and Columbo. Before this, Hawkeye had only sustained a few solo miniseries. Fraction and AHA's Hawkeye proved to be the breakout hit of 2012. My kids would flip. I mean, you're their absolute favorite. It told low-stakes stories about Clint and the newly minted Young Avengers Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, as they attempted to work through difficult problems like, what do we feed this dog? Why won't these local gangsters stop calling us bro? And is Madame Mask actually scary? The series redefined the character for the modern age. Previous to this run, the character had been a supporting ensemble member of Bendis' Avengers run, and then he was killed off and brought back as Ronan, 
a mysterious ninja with a dark past. He had also been a recurring character throughout the history of Avengers and West Coast Avengers as Goliath. But let's be honest, no one likes Goliath Clint. He needs to have a bow, not be a bootleg giant man. Okay, tiny dude is big now. He's big now. So in September of 2018, when Marvel Studios began developing a solo Hawkeye series, there was only one viable option for a Clint show. The Fraction and AHA work. However, as is so often the case with these works of genuine creative vision, when it was adapted by people other than Fraction and AHA, all the magic was lost. The Disney Plus show is a fine Disney Plus show, but it's a terrible Hawkeye show. Are there the vestiges of their work? The target graphic design motifs, the introduction of Kate Bishop and Pizza Dog? Yes. Do they make him hard of hearing? Sure. Do they end the show with him having a costume? Yeah, kinda. And that's the problem. The show's greatest ambition is to give Hawkeye a costume. She just outdid herself with this suit, right? The elasticity and this fabric. Stop. He's appeared numerous times on screen, specifically in one of the highest grossing films of all time, and yet the creatives involved were more concerned with giving him his Ronin costume, which he's worn for a collective 15 issues, than his standard iconic costume, which he had worn for over 60 years. It's not really the costume that we're complaining about. It's the creative cowardice to refuse to treat the characters with the respect they deserve. You know what I've become. Well, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Clint is a complex, interesting, and dynamic character when you write him correctly. The funny thing about this is that, while it's not perfect, the show Arrow handled many of the same archer tropes that Hawkeye plays with and did them better, for longer. And it's really fun when it works. Do you know anyone hiring ex-billionaires with superior archery skills? The real question that a Hawkeye show should have asked is, who is Hawkeye and why do we care about him? What it really did was immediately make us care about Kate Bishop more in the first five minutes of her introduction than we have in eight hours of Clint Barton. In summary, the MCU is continuing to grow and evolve. These supporting legacy characters are being moved up to A-list status, and they're being given the spotlight and opportunity to grow. Thus far, Hawkeye has not done that. The TV show failed the brilliance and deeply human approach that Fraction and AHA created, Maybe they'll get it right when the Hawkeyes show up in the inevitable Young Avengers TV show. Don't give me hope. What do you think? Will we ever see Hawkeye in his trademark purple hood? Comment down below, and as always, like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic to stay up to date with everything we're doing.